Imagine this. On November 2nd, 2019, the SEC on CBS televises the matchup between 3 and 5 Vanderbilt and 3 and 5 South Carolina instead of the matchup between number 8 Georgia and number 6 Florida because their contract requires every school in the conference to appear on CBS a minimum amount of times. The outcry would be immense. In 1986, one conference was faced with this dilemma and the results were disastrous. Before I begin, I ask that you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Over 73% of my watch time comes from non-subscribers, so why don't you stay a while and subscribe? I'll hold your jacket for you. Now, let's get back to the story. Our story starts in 1984 when the Board of Regents versus the NCAA court case paved the way for conferences and schools to negotiate their TV deals. Previously, the NCAA had negotiated the TV contract for all of its divisions each year, including determining which games were televised weekly. In the past, I have gone over this process extensively, so if you want to learn more, click on the card in the upper right hand corner. In another previous video, which you can find in the card in the upper right hand corner, I discussed PBS's strange contract with the Ivy League from 1984 to 1987. For those four seasons, PBS aired a game of the week for the Ivy League, and let's just say audiences never bought it, but at least they had a really cool intro. I'm sorry, I just have to show this again. These are the schools of the Ivy League. Brown University, Columbia University, Cornell University, Dartmouth College, University, University of Pennsylvania, Princeton University, Yale University, and this is the Ivy League Football Game of the Week. This week, Yale meets Harvard at the Harvard Stadium, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Ivy League Football is brought to you by The Travelers, people responsive to people with insurance and financial service needs. The Travelers where fairness is good business. PBS's partnership with the Ivy League was weird for several reasons, but one aspect was well-intentioned. The conference required each school to play in the PBS Game of the Week twice per season. This is great for giving each school exposure, but failed to factor in how terrible some teams were during this time. Two such terrible teams were Dartmouth and Columbia. Columbia's 47-game winless streak and 44-game losing streak from 1983 to 1988 has become a well-known piece of college football lore, and by 1986, Columbia had lost 21 straight games and had not won a game in 24 games. Dartmouth was not much better as they went 2-7-1 in 1985 and had not had a winning season since 1981. On November 8, 1986, with three more weeks to go in the Ivy League season, 0-7 Columbia would take on 1-6 Dartmouth. Both schools were every bit as bad as their record indicated. Columbia lost by an average score of 37-12, and if you take out their 34-point outburst against Villanova, the Lions averaged less than 9 points per game. Dartmouth was outscored by an average score of 35-14, and if you take out their 39 point performance against Yale, the Big Green averaged only 10 points per game. Both schools had appeared on PBS once so far in 1986, with Dartmouth playing four-time defending Ivy League champion Penn on September 20th and Columbia appearing on PBS the next week against Lafayette. Both games were surprisingly good, with Dartmouth staying within one score until the fourth quarter in a 21-7 loss to Penn. Columbia had the ball in the Lafayette 5, down 26-21 in 13 seconds the next week before a sack ruined a chance to end their dreaded losing streak. PBS's options were limited, with three weeks to go in the season, as the network was definitely airing Harvard-Yale on the last week of the season, making November 8th and November 15th the only options to show Dartmouth and Columbia and fulfill the contracts. So, PBS had to air Columbia-Dartmouth to get both schools their second appearance at the same time. But, two bad teams could end up making a good game, right? No, absolutely not. The Big Green beat Columbia easily by a score of 41 to nothing. Dartmouth's balance attack threw for 287 yards and ran for 267 yards for a total of 544 yards. Ernie Terrain ran for 143 yards and David Gabionelli completed 9 of his 15 passes for 271 yards and 2 touchdowns. One of Gabionelli's touchdowns was a 98-yard strike to Craig Morton, 
No, not that Craig Morton, who caught three passes for 158 yards and two touchdowns on the day. The big green defense forced eight turnovers, including five interceptions. Well, we may never see a game of the week for a conference this bad, but on November 8th, 1986, PBS had no choice at all. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you.